How to overcome the hitting wall in dating. When a woman hits the wall, that means that she has reached the point in her life where not only is her physical appearance beginning to deteriorate, but her fertility windows have all but closed. This woman is becoming an increasingly undesirable choice for a potential mate. 5 Signs That A Woman Has Hit The Wall The wall is the point at which a woman is no longer sexually desirable to men. Her good looks and shapely figure have faded and with it, all the power she had to command money, attention, and expensive dates from men. Hitting the wall is terrifying for women. In their youth, the simple hint that sex might be on the table is enough to motivate horny men to do almost anything. The manipulative woman plays gullible young men like marionettes. She will wear revealing clothing in short dresses, swish her hips, and stare at men seductively to get everything she wants. This promise of sex allows her access to vacations, material items, and even the ultimate sacrifice, marriage, from men. Women have little to no ability to do anything for themselves. They must use men's sexual nature against them to survive. Even so-called independent women use their good looks and sexuality to live life in accessible mode. An average woman can bat her eyes and get jobs. Flirt with police to get out of speeding tickets and coerce friends own simps to fix her car and help her move. When that ability starts to disappear, women are, understandably, alarmed. They haven't used their youth to secure a man to rely on financially, and are far too old to attract another. Although all women eventually age out of their ability to manipulate men for fun and profit, they are never prepared. Sign number one complaining, where are all the good men? When women get old, around age 30-35, they realize they can no longer compete with the bright eyes, smooth skin, and shiny hair of younger women. In a panic, they start scratching around for a bailout, the mild man a good man. That she never looked twice at when she was in her prime. At age 30-35 plus, women can't rely on their beauty to keep a steady stream of sexy, rich men around to take them on dates and trips. The nice guy is her reject button off of the cock carousel and into a comfortable life as a suburban housewife. She's had her fun. I can't understand why women think this is a selling point for men. Everyone knows what I've had my fun means. She's spent the last 20 years riding around like the town bicycle. Try to calculate the miles of dick that have been run through a 38-year-old woman who's had her fun and is ready to settle down. Nothing about that is remotely attractive to men, yet women consistently post this on dating apps daily. Sign number 2 bragging about getting hit on. Women get hit constantly because men are always trying to get laid. This happens dozens of times a day from the time women hit puberty until they stop looking appealing as they age. A teenage girl is used to receiving male attention everywhere she goes. From the mailman to the guy at the pizza place to the dudes at the mall. It's a standard part of her day, like checking her phone and hopping on Instagram. It's so typical that she doesn't mention it unless the man is exceptionally creepy which simply means unconfident and unattractive, in her opinion. When a woman starts bragging about men noticing her, it's because that stream of attention has slowed to a trickle. A woman who brags or complains about getting hit on wins twice. She receives attention from the man who catcalled her and again becomes the center of attention by telling the story. Sign number 3 Dating Younger Men from puberty forward, women are attracted to men with resources, good looks, and social status, which translates to older guys. First year high school girls date upper level students with cars and social status. Ignoring the scrawny, pimpled boys her age who ride bikes to school. And aren't physically mature enough to make the football team. As young women, they'll date the manager instead of their fellow broken turns. Women only look at younger men once they hit the wall. Around 30, men start to hit their stride regarding looks, social status, and money. A 30-35 year old man is the most confident, handsome, and booming he's ever been. As such, he's more desirable to women than ever. Many men this age choose to date younger women, as is entirely natural. Younger women want a man with a nice car, a bit of money to spend on nice dates, and the maturity she can admire. That leaves 30-something-year-old women out in the cold. 
men their age are chasing girls who just turned 22. Unfortunately, this is when a 30-year-old woman understands she is running out of time. Many women in this situation reach out to younger men, who are also left out because women their age prefer older men. When a woman in her mid-30s or older starts robbing the cradle, sexing down young men, that's when you know that she knows it's over. Sign number 4 Falsely claiming men are intimidated by her success. Men aren't intimidated by successful women. Women who think their career in human resources and finance Nissan Altima, shout out to coach Greg Adams, are scaring men should wake up to reality. It's not her Bachelor of Arts in Social Work that's turning men off, it's her nasty, opinionated attitude. As the saying goes, men don't like smart women. That's not the case. Men don't like bitchy, controlling, masculine creatures that women who think they are smart become. Sign number 5 claiming the wall doesn't exist. This is the most apparent delusional statement of the post-wall old lady. Everyone can see that her looks are waning, and her ability to attract men, at least the men she wants, is diminishing daily. The woman can't bear to acknowledge this plain reality if unmarried. Instead, she'll deny what her own eyes and everyone else's can see. Men flirt with me all the time. She'll protest. I get asked out more in my 40s than I did when I was 20, shall I? Horny teenage boys shooting their shots and puffs at the gas station don't count as men asking her out, but it's polite to nod and smile simply so as not to destroy her already damaged self-image. Emotional walls, signs, causes and ways to break them. Knowing how easily a person can be stripped of the potential to have a deeper connection with a mate is astounding. It only takes one individual's poor behavior with that person to ruin them for other potential partners. Once someone experiences what some might deem a harsh reality, they instantly prepare themselves so that the same incident cannot occur again. When going into a partnership with someone who won't share past details, or prefers to keep the relationship with family and friends, these are signs of emotional walls, barriers, and challenges for a mate to move past. To get to know the authentic version of the person genuinely, it's normal for people to step into dating different individuals with some sort of trepidation. However, some carry baggage from past experiences that render them rejected and insecure. Many tend to let go of these temporary partitions once they identify the variances between the mates. Past and current, understanding that the previous poor behavior is unlikely. Some partners, however, hold on to the emotional walls not allowing their mate to gain full access even as they grow closer, often to the detriment of the partnership. What does it mean to hit a wall emotionally? Many of you may know the meaning of the emotional wall. For others, hitting a wall can mean different things to different people. Still, the commonality is facing a dead end in your emotional path that you can't move beyond or progress through. The experience is abrupt. There's no gradual overtaking, nor is it a slow process. You feel more of a bam, where you thought you had everything worked out for yourself in the days leading up to it. Your thought process or intentions were to continue that journey without pause or reflection and no looking back. Unfortunately, a barrier or detour presented itself, leaving you flouncing with no backup plan because everything seemed ideal, and now it's simply not. Not knowing how to reset, whether in a relationship, a career, or even with goals you might have set can make you feel defeated. Still, people come out of mental walls successfully and sometimes better from the experience. When you have one of these harsh realities, you gain some strength and preparedness to take with you if something like this happens again, and you'll know what to do. What causes emotional walls to form? Emotional walls in relationships often appear like self-defense mechanisms. It's like everyone has an invisible shield they put up when feelings get a bit too real. Maybe it's from past heartaches or fear of vulnerability. When someone's been through the emotional ringer, those walls start to go up, piece by piece. It's not about shutting out the world, it's more like trying to dodge emotional landmines. People build these barriers to shield themselves from pain, disappointment, or rejection. Breaking down those walls requires patience, empathy, and a willingness to show that it's safe to let those defenses down. 11 signs you might have hit an emotional wall. 
There are different types of emotional walls. In relationships, there are occasions where a mate might come into the union with walls already built to protect themselves from what they perceive as impending rejection and subsequent hurt from that loss. The scenario is played out from a scene already experienced in a previous partnership projected into the current one. Instead of allowing the new partner to disprove the theory, the walls stand firm. This book, So This Is Who I Am, teaches you how to break down these walls and find your authentic self. Check out these signs to see if you might be putting walls up in a relationship. Number 1 Crying doesn't occur in front of your mate. When you become emotional, you attempt to regain your composure, hide the tears, or leave the room to avoid your partner witnessing the display. The downside is that you receive no comfort and cannot grow closer after sharing such raw feelings. Number 2 No eye contact with intimacy. Breaking down emotional barriers might be challenging for a partner when you don't look into their eyes in the most intimate moments. Whether a deep conversation or having sex. If you're having difficulty being comfortable in vulnerable situations, you'll need to look at possible reasons for your nervousness. Number 3 The past is in the past. Emotional walls in relationships dictate that the past is not discussed. There's debate over rehashing old baggage with new mates and whether you should focus on what went wrong with other partners. The past makes us the people we are in the present. It doesn't hurt to hear some backstories, even if you feel they might infringe on areas you don't want to revisit. That's how you develop a connection and establish trust with someone new. Number 4 Expressing emotions is difficult. Putting up walls to protect yourself means facing challenges when presenting affirmations to your mate. Unfortunately, a partner needs to know how you feel and that you care for their confidence, self-worth, and well-being in the same way that you want and need to be made to feel special. It will take effort, but gradually work into the compliments, and the positive feedback will encourage you to continue. Number 5 Pretension Should Fade At the beginning of dating, when things are new and awkward, mates put on airs so the other believes them to be perfect. After some time, the pretension fades and the authentic people come out, allowing weirdness and normalcy. If you're not letting go, instead of putting up emotional walls to maintain that perfect persona, you need to figure out why to avoid losing a partner who is not fond of perfection. Number 6 Introductions to friends and family are avoided. Partners will recognize signs of emotional walls with you when there's a desire to meet your family and friends. Still, you skirt the issue, avoiding introductions because that connotes getting closer. Which, according to you, has the potential for heartache, something you're hiding from. If your mate is inquiring with mutual friends about how to break down her emotional walls and get her to stop hiding the partnership, you might want to figure out how to work towards that end. Number 7 Problems continue to get brushed aside. Lack of communication is one of many examples of emotional walls. Opening dialogue to work through problems is frightening for emotionally disconnected individuals. You prefer to swipe the issues away like they don't exist. The only concern is that they can only fester for so long and then boil over. Number 8 Independence is rugged enough to let go of. Sure signs of emotional walls, such as preferring independence to codependency, making solo decisions and asking for partner's opinions. Even when it comes to something that might affect you equally, it might prove to be a learning curve for you. Still, it's vital to include your mate in thought processes that ultimately lead to something involving them and even ask their opinion occasionally on issues you're struggling with. It will give them a feeling of being included in your life. Number 9 Projection is another form of protection. Projection is among the signs of emotional walls using the presumption that everyone around you feels the same way you do and you can then assume what their intentions might be from those presumptions that can lead to significant damage in a new relationship relatively quickly number 10 maintaining control is your goal the premise of barriers or emotional walls in psychology is having control over love dating or relationships when you experience rejection pain or loss the walls go up to prevent a repeat. Of course, no one can predict another person's behavior, nor can you stop someone from leaving you if a partnership runs its course. That brings us back to the meaning of emotional walls, these keep people out. 
So, you control your behavior rather than control the other person. Number 11 Smiles are forced. Do you feel that the genuine happiness and joy naturally accompanying shared moments appear strained? It's like trying to put on a happy face even when the emotions behind it are not as authentic. When emotional walls are present, individuals may find themselves going through the motions of smiling, especially in social situations. Still, the warmth and sincerity that once characterized those expressions may be missing. How to break down an emotional wall, 7 well thought ways. It can be curious for an individual, mate, or anyone who hasn't experienced episodes of pain, trauma, or significant stresses to understand why we hit emotional walls or have protective barriers in place. These partners would also need to learn how to break down walls in a relationship where the person they love chooses not to let them in. Perhaps you're the one recognizing signs of emotional walls within yourself and find that these are growing to be entirely confining. Interfering with the partnership developing into something you want to explore more intimately. Barriers are beneficial when you feel you need to remain safe, but if the situations you need protection from are no longer a threat, it might be time to question whether you're ready to break these down. Way number one find a safe environment where you can start using emotions gradually. It's essential to find people with explicit trust and unconditional love, those who have proven themselves worthy without exception on many occasions with only your best interest as their concern so that you can let the walls down gradually in front of them. Because you've remained stoic and emotionless in front of others, it's not easy to open up. You will likely react physically, perhaps trembling, maybe some panic with throat closure, but everyone you choose to open up to will respond with support making the next time a bit easier and each time after that. Way number two prepare for pleasantries and not so much. Even in a group that loves you, you can expect that with everyone they're trying to help figure out how to get a woman to lower her emotional walls, there will be pushback. If something is revealed that someone might not necessarily agree with, while you're used to swiping away opinions, people might disagree with something you say when you let emotions and feelings come through. Perhaps they don't like the movie you saw. That shouldn't send you into a fight or flight reaction. Instead, a simple response, like, maybe it just wasn't your thing, that won't further draw out the conversation will move things along until you're ready for more. Way number three couples counseling can be exceptionally beneficial. It can be frustrating for the mate for someone whose partner recognizes signs of emotional walls and is working diligently to offer kindness, love, and patience to break through but has had no luck. The problem can become worse when you want to tear down the walls, but they have become so ingrained into who you are that you're having difficulty letting go. Threatening the partnership that has come to mean so much to you. Fortunately, relationship counseling can make an emotionally disconnected individual feel safe, allowing them to be vulnerable with their mate. The partner can gain insight into the behavior, the professional can further provide tools for handling problems due to the barriers. Way number four journaling is therapeutic. Journaling is used quite a bit in varied circumstances. Looking back at the beginning of your journey, bringing yourself to the present, and seeing how far you've come is beneficial. When you look at the beginning, what are emotional walls? Moving forward to where you erect these and make them strong, and then coming to the present day and being ready to let them go, that's profound. Reading through that journey can help you see that you no longer need that protection and realize that moving forward is the right step. Way number 5 Maintain a distance from triggers. Once you break free of the walls, which takes incredible effort and strength, ensuring these remain gone is crucial. A therapist can help you develop coping skills for situations that create challenges and automatically bring barriers to the surface. Ideally, you'll steer clear of the individual or individuals and circumstances that initially caused you to build these walls. That might mean eliminating some abusive people from your life. If that's not possible, ensure that your therapist provides appropriate tools so you can handle the abuse. Way number 6 Little Acts of Trust Create small building blocks for a strong relationship foundation. Especially when breaking down emotional walls, be consistent in your actions and words. Show up for your partner when they need you. Establish a culture of openness and sincerity with your significant other. These acts may seem small, 
but they carry considerable weight in creating an atmosphere of trust and security. Way number seven be open to feedback. Open up to constructive feedback and have a window in your emotional wall. These can help you ask and understand, why do I put up emotional walls? It means being willing to hear your partner's thoughts without feeling attacked. Instead of building higher walls, consider using feedback to strengthen your relationship. When your partner shares, take a moment to listen and see it as a step towards understanding each other better. Breaking down walls isn't always easy, but being open to feedback can be a game changer. What to do when you hit an emotional wall? When you recognize signs of emotional walls or that you hit an emotional wall. That dead end that stops everything in its tracks, the only thing you can do is stop. You're being detoured from the journey you had set forth for yourself. Things are not going as planned, whether it is a partnership, your goals, or life. That means you have to shake it off and refocus your energy. Someone somewhere is telling you it's time to change things up. Start a new journey, and perhaps a better one. Listen. Thank you for watching. Until next time.